you from planet Z. I asked her why you here, yeah. Oh, why you here? She like, but come here. Yes, you. Yeah, come here. I'm about to show you something that you never seen out here. Yeah. This the light show. This is my show. I take you around the world. Yeah, I show you my flow. I can show you something that you never seen. Yeah. Stack this money up until I start seeing hi guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome on this channel i talk about things spiritual i talk about crystals tarot cards divination that's what we're going to be talking about today travel i do a little bit of glam i'm a little bit everywhere so we talk about everything here so if you see anything on my channel that you're interested in you can stay here for a while subscribe like but today's video is going to be about divination and like the veneration of your ancestors. And I felt like this video was important because there is a space on the internet that should be a space for, it's okay for younger black people to ask questions about spirituality and stuff. But a lot of times they often get dragged and they don't really figure out the answer to the question that they needed. And then it also turns a lot of younger black people off of spirituality and back to Christianity. Like I know a lot of girls... Well, even the first thing that the, well, they'll come to these spiritual groups looking for love spells for men and stuff like that. And the group will just attack them rather than telling them, OK, well, this is how that works. It's not going to work the way you think it is, but this is how it will work. And this is what you have to do, because spells don't work unless you do. You can't just pay somebody to make somebody love you like that's not how the way it works. And if you do do that, if you do find a practitioner who's powerful enough to do that, then you have to also accept that you will have repercussion, repercussions that come with that, with messing with someone's free will. Reper, repercussions do come with that. So we're going to go right into that. Now, divination is just simply using a higher power, whatever you believe in, if it's God, if it's Allah, if it's the universe, whatever you believe in is bringing you messages through some form of some kind of medium. So the most common ones that we see, of course, are... Let me pull out my babies. This is the Afro Goddess tarot deck. And these, this is the most beautiful tarot deck I've ever seen. And they do not like to read to other people. Like, they are really snappy. But here are the cards. Here are some of the cards. These are beautiful. And I will link them down in the description below because I don't remember the lady's name who makes them. But she sent me my box. And it comes with this nice bag. There's a magnifying glass in there. I've had this deck for over a year, so it's a little dusty. Uh, it comes with a magnifying glass. It comes with a guidebook. And she has a whole lot of other oracle decks and stuff on her car, on her uh, website, too, like runes and stuff. But this is honestly the most beautiful deck I've ever seen. So I did go ahead and order a different tarot deck so I can, like, read more for other people. Because these decks, they are not nice. They are not nice. They're only nice to me. So you can go through tarot cards. We have women who like to use the sigils. So like that's basically when you make your own symbol based off of what you want and you're thinking about it, what your your desire, you're thinking about your desire while you're drawing the sigil. A lot of people do like they write the word and then they'll cross out all the vowels and then they somehow stick the letters together and they make something. I prefer, excuse me, if I do do that, I prefer to like make it myself because it makes it more mine rather than like the American alphabet, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so, but it's different for everybody. And another thing now, back in the day, there was another popular one too, because I made this video the other day. It's early in the morning. So my family is a Christian family. My, I love my grandma and my mom. If I don't know what they would do if they heard me in here, like talking about like mediumship and, and talking to spirits and stuff. So I try to do this stuff while they're asleep. So I did wake up early this morning. I did. I didn't do anything with my hair. I just took it out the cornrows, y'all. Like, they were telling me, get me out of here. So, I took them out. That's why they look like this. And I did do my eyebrows, put on some lip gloss. Voila. But it was tarot cards, sigils. And what's the other thing that people use all the time? It's something else. It was three things. I feel like it's somewhere in this room if I just look for it hard enough. But anyway, those are those are the most two important, not important ones, but that's what you're mainly going to find people divinating. Like, oh, oh, pendulums, pendulums. I have one sitting right here. So the pendulum thing, I'm trying to learn to work with her, but I'm not going to lie to you. I went, we, me and my boyfriend, we bought this on my birthday. We were in Charlotte. It's this place called the bag, the bag lady intuitive gifts. And so I was like, I really want a pendulum. And so I was like, I'm going to wait for one to call out to me. And so I sat there and I just waited for a twitch or anything. And then so something fell behind, something small fell behind 
the thing where the pendulums were swinging. And so I went to move it and I tried not to touch any one, one of them, but I touched this one. It was a single one that was moving. So my whole hand moved through there and only touched this one. So I felt like this one called me. Now I did end up breaking her. This is what the back of it says. It says, may the lady of the spiral show you the way or the path. And then that's the lady. And I really, I, after I touched it, because I didn't really look at any of them really good. After I touched it, I was like, yeah, that's the one. Now, I was trying to read it. And I think I might have been being a little too rough with this. Because I couldn't really get like a straight no or yes. So I was like, okay, well, I don't want it to seem like I'm just moving it with my hand. So I would go like that and let it dangle on its own. And then I was holding it by this, so it snapped. So... I mean, but that's where, that's how I got the clearest answer. Like I was seeing what, what meant yes and what meant no, the way it swung. And the only way I was getting a clear answer was if I go like that and it would give me the clear answer. So it did end up breaking. I don't know if it was supposed to break, but I kind of did like this one here. I might try to attach it, like make a new chain for it or something, something stronger that this heavy pendulum won't break. I like saying pendulum so that won't break. So yeah, tarot cards, sigils and pendulums that's going to be what you're seeing most common since like occult is trending that's what you're going to see more often but back in the day especially black people our melanated people we didn't have tarot cards we didn't have we didn't have fancy rocks on strings that spun we didn't have this kind of stuff now you can make your own but also another way now some things that i use are not traditional like you wouldn't see but you know you can also use nine cori shells or puka shells. That's what me and my boyfriend call them. We call them puka shells. Now these don't have the back on it. If you're starting, if you want to learn how to use these in your beginning, you should get the ones with without the back on them. When you throw them, up is yes and down is no. Or yeah, if you're doing it a yes or no question, then like the way you would use this. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be sharing this. So give me a second. Okay, yes, yeah, so I can tell you. So this, these are the ones that I use. These are the full blown cori shells puka shells whatever you want to call them they have the back on them and everything i bought them from a crystal shop in myrtle beach so you would take nine of them now i can't show you them that's what i can't show you i can't show you me throwing them that's that's sacred stuff so you have nine crystals and it's basically everything that you can divinate works with numerology some way shape or form like tarot cards you have it's kind of like a deck of cards you have the major arcana or arcana i don't really know how you pronounce it i just know what it does and that's like um the the star the moon the sun those are those kind of cards and then you have like a whole soup you have swords you have wands you have pentacles and you have cups and they all represent something different and then the real thing so once you learn about the swords the wands the pentacles and the cups and you learn how those affect emotions and stuff like that then you want to go and you want to learn numerology because everywhere it means the same thing so like when you see twos of anything it usually means like partnership or something like that one new beginnings three it just really depends on what suit it's in is you can get really down to the specifics on it if i literally went down to the specifics on it on this video it would probably be entirely too long but numerology is going to be the basis of everything. So once you realize, like, you know, when you see angel numbers, like 444 means your angels are with you. That usually means in tarot, that means like, I think about four is like a square. There's four corners. I usually think about that as like a sturdy foundation. So depending on what the card looks like, if you see like, a, like my four of wands card, it's a, it's a couple and they're under this thing and it has four wands and it makes a square. If I could find the card, but you know, there's 80 cards in here, 78 to be exact. I found a two though. Okay, I went through the deck and I found it. So here's my four of wands card. And you can see like this is a new young couple and they're having, I don't know if she's pregnant. I'm going to assume that she's pregnant and they're all under this stable foundation. So that's what the four of wands look like. So when you see four, think of like stable foundation. There's another one I found, the four of swords. Now she, not, it doesn't necessarily have to be a foundation that you're building with somebody, but you see this cloud that she's sitting on. And this card represents like, if you pull like a four of swords, it means you've been battling a lot. Like these are your battle swords and this is what you're going to be resting on. This is the foundation and she's also leaning on her sword. So she's her own foundation right now. She's been at war. It's okay for her to rest now. So when you see fours, that's just an example of one. That's just going to mean that you're going to have some kind of stable foundation coming or you need to find the stable foundation depending on whatever the rest of the reading is. 
So, with that being said, now, tarot reading is not for everybody. Sigils will not be for everybody. Pendulums will not be for everybody. Kohri shells will not be for everybody. You can divinate literally anything you like. I'm one person who I can find trinkets and stuff outside in the woods. I found this outside. And my friend said a fairy gave it to me. I mean, look at this marble. Have you ever seen a marble look like a galaxy? If I can get it to focus. Focus, there you go. It looks like a galaxy full of stars. So I found this marble out in the forest. I find, this is my box full of cool things that I find. And my friend got me this necklace when she went to London. Well, she didn't get it for me. I borrowed it and it just kind of like never returned back to her. Yeah, but so you can really divinate anything. So if you see four buttons on the ground and they just look like something you can divinate, pick up those buttons. Ask, put them on your altar. Ask, what can these buttons do for me? Or what do these buttons mean? Like maybe they'll say like a certain number of buttons flipped over means yes, or this is going to happen. So uh, but you should use should, anything, anything you try to divinate, if you're going to try to use something like that, you should get nine of them because there's nine numbers. And like I said, the universe works with numbers. Now, that's all I have to say about divination. Now we're going to move into a deeper part of spirituality that a lot of people might not be interested in. So if you're not interested in talking to your ancestors and people who have passed on before you, then this might be where this video ends for you. So when you're talking, when when we talk about venerating our ancestors it just it just means honoring the people who walked here before you it just means taking knowledge of or just being acknowledging that they that they walked before you that they being thankful that they were here because if you are like me now my grandmother my grandmother my paternal grandmother now she has this very rough story now i don't know anything my grandma died when i was 17 that was about six years ago and i was not old enough i did not have a car to she lived in connecticut i lived in south carolina so i didn't see my grandma before she died and it but it was like they were, she came to me in this time where i had nobody else like i was actually probably midway through pandemic and i had something really good happen for me and my parents weren't happy for me my siblings weren't happy for me but the only person who i could who i could actually feel pushing me along was my grandmother and i always felt like a warm hand on my back or something so i ended up now my dad has other kids and they had other kids so it ended up being this whole blossoming thing of i actually kind of put our family back together like i'm in contact with these people i know who they are because i was under the impression that my nieces were my sisters so that's how disconnected it was we don't really know anything about my grandma except this one story that was told and she said one day that two white men came to her door and said that they were her brothers now we don't know anything else other about her other than she is from she she was what sicilian and portuguese so i don't know if she came from sicily i don't know if she came from portugal i don't know what she is I just know this is what I look like. So I, and so I, and then I know that I could feel her along with me when I was in those times. And she would send, she would send things to let me know that it was her, like pink roses were what she was sending me. Because in my whole four years of attending Coastal Carolina University, I had never seen, I had never seen pink roses. And then especially during the pandemic when nobody's on campus, why are there pink roses everywhere? So I would find pink roses. I would see them in the store. I would have them in, like I have a poster, a scissor. I think it's an album cover, a cover, or it might just be a picture of her, but she's like surrounded in pink roses and I had never really paid attention to it until like I was feeling my grandma. So when, when you, so the point of all of that is because a lot of people, if you do go out looking for information on how to connect with your ancestors, you're going to find people who are going to tell you, no, you can't do that. No, you have to have somebody else to do that. Let somebody tell you that you can't connect with your own ancestors unless through them and then they want money. No, don't do that. Don't follow through with any of that. Because I was in one of these phases. I didn't have an altar for a while. So like this whole time I was connecting with my grandma, it was strictly off of, I didn't have tarot cards. I didn't have but like five crystals. It was all, it was all downloaded. So this, everything else that I have, these crystals, this jewelry business, everything else has blossomed from that connection. So, because there was nothing at first. There was nothing. I didn't know anything about it. 
So I was on this Facebook group and I kept seeing that everybody was saying, okay, well, if you have an altar, you need a white cloth. You need a white cloth. And so I refused to even try to like sit down and actually have the conversation that I needed to have with my ancestors because I didn't have this white cloth. Now, this was back in the day when I had just moved into my first apartment and it was in the middle of the beginning of the pandemic. So I couldn't go to work. I had lost my job. So I was really just scraping up money, buying jewelry, not buying jewelry, but making jewelry. So like all the money I was making, like I was making waist beads from all my I had one set of beads now I have this full bead organizer it has all blossomed I had one set of beads and so everything I was making was going towards paying bills all the money and I didn't make money from anywhere else other than stuff that I had made so I but I needed to talk to somebody and my mom wasn't going to help me my mom just thought I was stupid for doing it in the first place so you have to talk to these people because apparently you're in a space that other people aren't in you're on a higher vibrational frequency your parents can't meet you there your friends can't meet you there your siblings can't meet you there you're here by yourself so you're gonna have to talk to them and you don't have to pay anybody to talk to them you don't need a white cloth to talk to them because i pushed back this so far i think it was like three months i was like and so i was like you know what i'm done and i'll put a picture somewhere over here of what my first altar looked like it doesn't look like a traditional altar it doesn't have like pictures of people on it but this was my altar and this was my space and that's where i talked to my answers to that and it gets the same thing done you don't need a white cloth all you need is the intention to talk to them now one thing I will say that you probably should go with because but this is only a download that I got from my ancestors now your answers my, your ancestors might like something different but my ancestors said that they did like the white candle the white candle and the glass of water was all they needed it didn't care if you set it on the floor it didn't they didn't care if you set it on the ground if you have a white candle and a glass of water just talk to them that's all they need they just need that flame and that glass of water that's all so if anybody is interested in talking to them now don't expect don't expect to hear things or don't expect to see ghosts or anything because i know some people really do expect that that's what you do when you're when you're a medium and you're seeing stuff but that's not how that works you're gonna get after you talk to them you ask them what you need don't just go asking for them make sure you ask how they're doing tell them what you're going through so they and then because they can see you at all times they're always there so make sure you have a conversation don't just go begging okay this is not christianity don't go begging nobody for nothing so but let them talk to, let them move through you tell them your struggles tell them why this is not going right for you tell them what you could be doing wrong i mean tell them what you could be doing better and then you're gonna wait you're gonna wait now some people get things immediately but if it's the first time that you're doing this then it's probably not going to be an immediate change but wait for new opportunities like wait like i said like i just started seeing pink roses and i was feeling this this woman presence behind me and i was hearing in my head it was like put my family back together put my family back together and i knew what she was talking about i knew who she was talking about but i didn't know how i didn't think i had the power to and then i just did because I, i'm the youngest out of everybody i'm my dad's youngest child my dad's oldest kids have kids and grandkids i'm the youngest so i didn't i had to put this all together by myself and that's when i knew it was me it was me that my ancestors were waiting for and so and so you just gonna you're gonna wait you're gonna wait for the answers to the questions that you need you're gonna see like i don't know what you might ask them for if you're asking for a little bit of financial help and then you see something, maybe on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and you're like, hmm, I like that. I could maybe make some of those. Make them. Make them. Or if you're looking for, okay, well, why isn't my relationship going going well? And then you go to the store the next day and you see somebody who treats you or like you drop a you drop an apple or something. And this man, he picks up the apple and he looks at the apple and then he looks at you and he just gives you that look and you feel it you might need to talk to him you might need to get rid of whoever this is and you might need to talk to him it's going to come in a new opportunity or a new way of thinking if it doesn't but when after you get to where you're practicing and when you're talking to them often when you're feeding them often then they feed you often then you start downloading if you are a meditator now you don't have to meditate to do this if you are a meditator then you can wait for your answers in your meditative sessions now it's really as simple as that. Just simply talk to them and then the answer will come. I am available all the time. If you want to message me on Instagram, if you want to message me here, if you heard something or if you asked them for something and you're looking for the sign of what they said, then feel free to ask me and I will do my best to. I have, I have this ability. I can tap into other people's and I can tap into your aura, I guess. I can't, I can't, I don't have a, the ability to just like 
you know, like those mediums on TV who are just like, has anybody known anybody named John? I can't do that. But if you ask me to and you tell me it's okay, I can talk to them. So if you have any questions or if you need anything, I will be available. But that is all that is to it to this video. I just wanted to simplify, simplify everything. And I wanted to like take my pickaxe and knock down the imaginary gate that black people have been making for other black people. And that's about it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, but I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.